Imagine a world where a single spark of creativity, ignited by an individual with a small idea, has the power to reshape industries, uplift communities, and leave an indelible mark on the fabric of society. Today, we stand at the crossroads of innovation where the convergence of human ingenuity and artificial intelligence is ushering in a new era where small is no longer synonymous with insignificant. AI allows small ideas and small businesses the ability to wield the kind of impact once reserved for giants. Over the next few minutes, let's take a look at the unfolding chapters of the extraordinary tale and reveal how AI's amplifying touch has the potential to turn whispers of possibility into resounding echoes of success. Hi, my name is Yukta Srinivas, and that introduction was written by ChatGPT. So to start things off, I would like to show this screenshot. So this is possibly one of the most iconic movie characters of all time, Luke Skywalker. You might recognize him from the first three Star Wars movies. However, this isn't a screenshot from The Empire Strikes Back. Rather, it's from the 2020 TV show The Mandalorian. The problem is the actor Mark Hamill, who plays Luke Skywalker, is now over 70 years old. What you see is over a year's worth of hard work research and development by a team of experts at Disney to create one of the first mainstream AI deepfakes ever shown on mainstream television. And then, a few months later when the episode released, uh, a small YouTube channel posted this video. So what took a billion dollar company over a year to do, a group of five guys did in just two weeks. So how is it? How is it that this technology is developing so rapidly that in over just the course of a year, a deep fake went from something unimaginably hard to do to something which is now an Instagram filter. So the answer to this rapid development has to do with open source. Normally when you develop a new technology, you are faced with two options. One, keep it for yourself and benefit by yourself. Or two, open source. And recently, artificial intelligence creators have been taking the route of open source. So for example, right now, you can go on your computer and you can download this exact same deepfake software completely for free, every single line of code. This is obviously great news for a, a user like me, but it's even better used for a developer or a programmer. Stable diffusion, the machine learning algorithm behind almost all image processing and image generation, is completely open source. This means every single line of code is available online to anyone with internet access completely for free and completely free from any copyright. So any developer entering the field of AI does not have to start from scratch. They simply improve and specialize on the massive framework of tools already built. They stand on the shoulders of giants, if you will. So what this leads to is rapid exponential growth because hundreds of thousands of the world's most brilliant programmers are working on the exact same problem simultaneously. And a prime example of this rapid exponential growth is actually ChatGPT. So in the year 2015, OpenAI, the company behind ChatGPT, was founded. And around four years later, they released the first working GPT model, GPT-2. This gains a small amount of traction online, especially in developer communities. And then three years later, they make a massive generational leap with GPT-3, what we know as ChatGPT. And this gains a massive amount of traction online. And then just six months later, they make the biggest generational leap till date, GPT-4, a classic example of exponential growth. The time between each generation is slowly decreasing. This not only has to do with the number of developers being added to the project, but also due to the open source nature of generative models. But how exactly does this help small businesses? Let's get to that. So here I have an image of a t-shirt design that a group of my friends and I made for a charity fundraiser event we were doing. However, we don't have the capacity to make a digital art or the funds to hire an artist, but we do have one artist. One artist that can do the same thing millions of times, in any style, in any way, and Anna doesn't ask for payment, Stable Diffusion. And with the help of Stable Diffusion, we were able to make this product. We never replaced a designer we found one that only needed an idea. In a similar vein, here's an advertisement we made for promoting the same product. This is my friend Visfesh. Uh, Johnny, 
God's sake. So, Hiring a professional editor is tedious, time-consuming, and expensive. But with the help of an AI-accelerated editor and an AI-accelerated editing workflow, we were able to promote our product in a day, regardless of the limitations that we had. So as we can see, over the years, the, the advantages of a massive workforce and millions of dollars in marketing budget is slowly shrinking. So this leads to a more fair, competitive market that any single person might be able to join. This still seems a little bit abstract, so let me give a, a good analogy for this. Let's look at the development of photography. So going back to, say, the 1940s, taking a picture was a, a very complicated process. You had to line up a series of three metal sheets, do something with a big bag of chemicals, and let a, a long picture take a long time to expose. It was the expensive, tedious, complicated process that took years to master. And Photography was actually really hard to do. Then a couple decades later, this thing called a DSLR was released by someone who at the time was a nobody. This meant you just had to attach a lens, turn a few dials, point and click, and boom, perfect digital image. So obviously traditional photographers who had taken years to develop and master their craft were very angry. The skills they had spent years developing were completely worthless. But what happened? They learned how to use DSLRs, and the field of photography thrived. The art form grew to the biggest it had ever been, thanks to the development of DSLR cameras. And then, just a few years ago, we had this exact same argument all over again, because of smartphones. Now, thanks to AI-accelerated smartphone cameras, now the barrier of entry to photography was reduced even now a lot more. Now you don't have to turn any dials, you don't have to play with any big clunky lenses, you just point and tap. So what this has led to is the barrier of entry went down even more, and the people who spent a lot of money and a lot of time on DSLRs were angry again, history repeated itself. But now the world of photography is massive. It, it contains everyone from your aunt to your cousin, and now photographers have to innovate, and the art form is the biggest it has ever been. So I believe something very similar is happening in the field of AI especially AI when it comes to filmmaking, and AI when it comes to artworks. The value of the artworks isn't necessarily reducing, just like the value of a picture hasn't necessarily reduced, but the barrier of entry to the field has massively reduced, making it more accessible to anyone, especially in the world of film, where AI has been of great help. So one of the biggest advantages of this is something which I like to call democratization. So big budget movie companies and Hollywood in general has been very infamous for its misrepresentation and underrepresentation of marginalized communities. And I believe that democratization due to AI is how we combat this problem. Because since the barrier of entry has been reduced so much, even the smallest people and even these marginalized communities can tell their own stories. Big companies and big studios don't get to control which stories get told. And this is very important to equality and, and to combat discrimination in the world. But this is great and all, but there are obvious ethical considerations when it comes to any talk about artificial intelligence. So one of the big ethical considerations when it comes to stable diffusion was actually copyright infringement. Because stable diffusion was a machine learning algorithm. And what did it learn from? Uh, mostly copyrighted images. So the question at hand is, is what stable diffusion and image generating AI doing, is it transformative enough to be considered fair use or not? A second ethical consideration is algorithmic bias. We, we talked about open source, we talked about how programs compound on top of each other, and, but what if that was a mistake? What if there was a bias in the original program? This could have a massive butterfly effect which was completely unforeseen sometime down the road in the future. And lastly is privacy and security concerns. It's no secret that your, your phone is always listening to you, but thanks to AI and advanced data processing, it can now understand you. But there is one problem which has been uh, most of what the talk around AI has been centered around, and this is uh, job displacement. Now, I don't know anything about economics, but it goes like this. New technology gets created, old jobs get displaced. But in my view, new technology also creates new opportunities, which creates new businesses, which creates new jobs. So we can't necessarily say the problem is the introduction of AI. That's already happened, we can't change that. It is what it is. But the problem should be making the old jobs displaced equal to the new jobs created. But just saying this won't change anything. 
But I believe that we can achieve this by discussing how anyone can turn a small idea into a fully functioning business with zero funding with the help of artificial intelligence. So I would like to end things off with a small demonstration. So why don't we, as a group, make a business together right now? So obviously we have to start with an idea. I could have come up with one myself, but I couldn't be bothered, so I asked ChatGPT. Uh, num number five, we'll use number five. A sustainable fashion line named Eco Cheek. Style meets sustainability. Right, well, now we need a logo. All businesses have a logo. We could learn how to do art, or we could ask logomaster.ai. Uh, put in the name, select a reference, select a color, slogan. Oh, and we have a, a, a trademark-free logo. But let's take things a step further. Let's make a website. Normally you need like a graphic development team, or a software development team, a back-end team, a front-end team, or you could use a durable.co, a great AI website maker. Let's put in the type of business, name of the business, and oh, we have a fully functioning website. If you think about it, a website is really just a bunch of pictures and text. Two things AI is great at. But we can't just have like a, a website and a logo and a name. We need a product or a fashion brand, right? Let's just make a product. Let's make like a, a, a t-shirt. I'm thinking something with like a nice digital print. Let's make the digital print first. Uh, I just went to Dali, OpenAI's image generating tool, put in a random prompt, and I, I like that last one. That, that looks kind of nice. Yeah, that works. We have, we have a product. But what about production? That's the final stage to any business pipeline. We've gone from idea to production. Uh, I could do my research and find people who make t-shirts in Chennai, or I could ask Bing AI, find me some t-shirt printing companies in Chennai. And it did. And, uh... <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, now, I'm no expert when it comes to the field of AI, but the interesting thing is that this field is so new and so rapidly developing that no one is. Anyone stands an equal chance of entering this field right now and reaping massive benefits in the future. And this badly scratches the surface of the AI tools that we have in the world today. So if there's one takeaway that I would like everyone to take away from this presentation, it's that the future is here. We just need to embrace it. Thank you.